Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast today. The president of the Cleveland Teachers Union, David Kolke, and director of community engagement for the union, Merrill Johnson, will give us an update on the new contract with the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. Also, they will give us tips for parents and students as the new year, school year, is about to begin. We will also hear from the CEO of City Mission, Rich Trickle. He'll talk about what's being done to celebrate that organization's 100th anniversary, the City Mission. And later in the broadcast today, Today, Bridget Hobson and Dr. Sally Massimi will talk about a series of seminars for women with disabilities. Good morning. I'm Leon Bibb, and this is Kaleidoscope. And we begin with David Qualke, president of the Cleveland Teachers Union, and Merrill Johnson, director of community engagement for the Cleveland Teachers Union. Good to have you both with us. Good morning. Good morning. You teachers have signed a new deal with the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. You are satisfied with this new three-year deal, Mr. Qualke? Um, yes, I am. And, and we're glad that uh, not now we can focus on getting the school year started. It was uh, pretty rough negotiations, but I think uh, in general we ended up with a contract uh, that came out that's good for kids and it's fair for our members. Merrill, you've been a teacher, a longtime teacher in Cleveland schools and now director of community engagement. Uh, uh, how are teachers feeling about this now? Sometimes when we go through the situations that we have gone through, there's sometimes a little bit of friction points. Are we able to smooth over those friction points now? We have to. Uh, it would be unrealistic to say that everybody is, is happy, but, but um, I feel the teachers understand that this was something that had to be done. Uh, the way the economy is now we could not get the kind of contract that we're used to getting in the past but um, our, our teachers understand and our, our all of our members understand that uh, this was the best that we could do uh, at this time yeah, new contract signed sealed delivered signatures where they should be so now we move on right Correct. President Polky, what are some of the challenges you see facing the system now? Well, I think one of the, the biggest challenges we have is working with the district around the transformation plan. And that was one of the, the critical components that we had in the uh, collective bargaining agreement. We came up with a teacher voice and a teacher uh, a collaborative say within the transformation plan, both in, in, in each of our buildings and on a district-wide basis. Um, I think one of the other biggest challenges we have in front of us and a, an issue that's been, uh, we've been very proactive as the teachers union has been around teacher quality. And once again, in the contract, we're going to work together with the district on developing uh, a new teacher development and evaluation instrument. How do we judge teacher quality? Do we judge them by what the students learn or how do we, how do, we do that? Um, you know, there's no silver bullet out there to say the perfect uh, solution, um, but, but certainly uh, a one-day snapshot in time is not fair, nor is it correct. I think what a, what a teacher evaluation system uh, is going to develop or should look like is something that includes multiple measures, something that includes student growth. I don't think any teachers are afraid of test scores. Teachers test kids regularly. Uh, but the true, uh, the reality is that our profession deals with teacher development, supporting teachers from an entry year through their mid-career through their veteran years. So I think we have to develop a system that's really going to be fair that's going to encompass all types of multiple measures and really is going to develop our profession throughout the years. Yeah. Uh, Merle, you, you're a director of community engagement. Yes. How do you engage the parents to be more engaged with the school system? Well, uh, one way is that uh, we recently had a big free school supplies uh, giveaway. We have a number of, of members who um, uh, uh, their buildings closed. We have a lot of members who had a lot of extra supplies. So, so we uh, engaged the parents by um, we recently had them come and and pick up supplies. Mm -hmm. um, and we also are reaching out uh, to parents in their uh, their churches, uh, recreational centers. We uh, developed something called the community critique in which we had a number of articles from various stakeholders and, and puzzles and an and, uh, article from David. We also had an article from Stanley Miller, Executive Director of the NAACP. And we gave out about 5,000 this summer at various festivals and so forth, just making sure that, that parents understand that we want to work with them 
and uh, that we're very proud to be teaching their children. David Kolke, you understand that parents are vital in this, in this thing about teaching kids. I mean, really, education, really, the stage is set at home, isn't it? Absolutely. Is and that I, what your teachers are telling their, their, uh, their parents? Yes, and I, and I think, you know, we've got to build on involving parents more and more. I think one of the, one of the challenges we've always had, and I think even around the, the closed buildings and the transformation plan, is engaging more parents, more community members, um, you know, moving our system forward. It's going to really have to create a real partnership, kind of a new type of partnership that, that we haven't had in the past. And uh, like I said before, there's no real silver bullet out there. It's going to take the hard work. I think our, our teachers understand our parents. I think they understand our kids. And, and really, we've all got to pull together around this. And Leon, one thing that's uh -huh. really important is, is for us, I've de developed something called the ABCs of student success. That's A, attend school on time. We need our parents to make sure they get their children to school on time. Uh, behave yourself follow the rules, including school uniform, and complete all assignments. And if we can engage parents in, in being involved in that way, then, you know, we don't always need parents to come and sit in the school all day to be involved. They can be involved at home and making sure that their young people are doing what they should be doing. In our final 30 seconds, uh, David Quilke, uh, uh we're trying to educate kids for the 21st century. Uh, uh, are the, are, are, are the, do the kids fully understand that, that they need this education? I mean, when I was a kid, I, I didn't understand a lot of things. But do they fully understand it, and do the parents fully understand it, that the teacher is really there to really save their lives for the future? I don't think that's, that's understood enough. I think many of our, our, our kids see that. But what we've got to do, and, and really I think one of the focuses that we have to focus on this school year is our high school, because we're losing too many kids who are dropping out of school and not seeing that this... Our, our public education system is really the lifeline for their future. So we're losing too many kids through that dropout rate. Um, we've got to focus on our high school because it really and truly is their lifeline. It is their lifeline indeed. David Qualke is president of the Cleveland Teachers Union. Merle Johnson, director of community engagement for the Cleveland Teachers Union. Thanks so much for being on the broadcast. We will have you back often. Thank you. We Thank, you. Thank you for having us. It goes. Thank my you. pleasure. It is my pleasure. We'll take a break. I'll be right back in a moment. We'll talk to Rich Trickle of the City Mission, celebrating 100 years. The City Mission is not Rich Trickle. Back in a moment. Welcome back to more of Kaleidoscope. The City Mission is celebrating its 100th anniversary this year, and the CEO, Rich Trickle, will talk about the history of the organization, the City Mission, and how it evolved and what's being done to celebrate 100 years. So we say hello to Rich Trickle, CEO of City Mission. Hey, Rich. Hi, Leon. Yeah, good to have you here. Thanks. 100 years. You've been doing a lot of good. The City Mission has been doing. It's, it's been it's it's wonderful. Yeah, the the mission has has been in Cleveland for, uh, like you said, a hundred years, reaching um, a lot of of hurting people and, and doing some wonderful things. What would you say is the mission of the city mission? Well, the primary mission of the mission is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. But of course, associated with that, uh, we meet the uh, the very basic uh, needs of people in deep crisis. So we provide food, clothing, shelter. Uh, provide a host of services, uh, both to men and women, uh, a huge uh, ministry to young people. We do a lot of things. I know you've been located for some years now at uh, Carnegie and East 55th Street. That's correct. That's our main campus. But you did not always start there. You did not start <laughs> there a hundred years ago. No, we where didn't. Did, where did it start? Well, it started on, uh, in, a, in, a, in an old saloon on St. Clair mm -hmm. and uh, uh, moved to a couple of different locations. Uh, uh, throughout the city over the years and then about 16, 17 years ago, of course, we landed at, uh, at the corner of 55th and Carnegie. We have a beautiful campus there. And one of the things you do is you provide uh, shelter? Yes, we do. For those who, who need shelter mm -hmm. and food and, and, and religious uh, uh, strengthening as well. From that's Christian religion from a Christian point of view. That's right. Our uh, we have both men and women that are with us in a a residential discipleship program, and of course, our firm conviction is that the uh, the way to to move past many of the barriers in their life is to become established and discipled in Christ. You brought some photographs, which we want to get a get a shot of. Uh, uh, get a get a shot of this one. I, I especially like this one because this goes back a few years. Uh, looks like it goes back to the late uh, late 1920s, perhaps the early 
early 1930s, a door of hope, because that is exactly what you have been, isn't it? That's right, and what, what you're looking at, of course, is a cover to a, a book on the history of the mission that will be uh, published uh, sometime in September. Mm -hmm. And we've also got, got something, I'm gonna, we can hold that shot if I can do this. Sure. Uh, uh, we got another shot here, which, uh, which kind of advertises what you're getting ready to do on October the 2nd. Tell us about this event now. This band probably will not be there on October well, the 2nd. Well, you never know. It's going to be a night of surprising. That, <laughs> surprises. This That's is right. photograph. Uh -huh. We are looking forward to a wonderful gala celebration event October 2nd on the Wolstein, at the Wolstein Center. Uh, we're going to have a combined church choir. We, right now we have over 400 members from churches all over the city. Uh, joining us at that celebration will be many of our partners, our agency partners. We hope to have about 40 there and thousands of people. It's called the Celebration of Hope at the Wallstein Center. What do people need to do to, if they want to go to this event and, and uh, celebrate with you? Very simple. Uh, tickets are only $10 and they can be purchased right through the mission. Our website, thecitymission.org. Uh, give us a call. Uh, come down and pick them up. So uh, easy to get there. It's $10 just $10. for this event. What time does it start on Saturday, October the 2nd? 7 p.m. At, at the Wallstein Center at Cleveland State University celebrating 100th anniversary. What are you going to do with that $10? Now, that helps you continue the mission of the city mission. It certainly does. It, it helps us continue the, the mission. It helps us uh, uh, put on the event uh, and provide this night of celebration and, and move our ministries forward. Mm -hmm. Around us, we are surrounded by some, some big, big placards. Perhaps you can see some of those if we, take a, if we can get a wide shot of that. It may be difficult to do at this moment. But you are steeped in history, many of the things we see around. Steeped in history. You have been there for 100 years, saving the souls of the people and providing the material things that they need to, to continue with life. What goes through your mind as you look at these old photographs? Well, like you mentioned, the deep history of this organization and the conviction and the dedication of our founders has been significant. And the other thing is that the mission is entirely supported by private dollars. We don't take any government money. So the generosity of the people of Cleveland um, is continually before me, and I, th I thank God for that. You've got four areas of outreach the Crisis Center for Men, Laura's Home, Pathway Family Outreach, Inmate Outreach. You handle a lot of different areas, don't That's you? That's right. We've got, we got a minute remaining. Tell me about one, one, one of those events, one of, one of those centers. Well, one of the things that is most encouraging to us is our Pathways Family Outreach. It's all about kids and their families. And we work with literally hundreds and hundreds of kids. We just ended our summer program. Every day at the mission, we had over 100 kids there. Uh, during the school year, we're busy from morning until evening with kids from the neighborhoods coming to us. We provide scholarship dollars. We've got kids from the city and colleges all over the country, yeah. uh, partially funded by the mission. And you've got the Crisis Center for Men and the Inmate Outreach. Those. That's right. We work with inmate outreach services. We work with inmates throughout Ohio. We've got about 600 men and women we're working with. Many are paroled to the city mission's residential programs. And you help them find their way to life, a good, positive life again. Absolutely. Well, Rich Trickle, thank you so much for what you do. He's the longtime CEO of the City Mission. And once again, it's anniversary celebration, one celebrating 100 years. It's going to be Saturday, October the 2nd, at the Wallstein Center at Cleveland State University. Tickets are $10 if you tell, telephone 431-3510, as you see at the screen, or go to thecitymission.org. You can find more information. $10 ticket. When you buy a $10 ticket, you're saving somebody's life, aren't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Rich Trickle, good to see you, my friend. Thank you. Lee. Always good to chat with you. Thank Always you. good to chat with you. One of the good guys in Cleveland. We're surrounded by good people throughout <laughs> this community. You know that. I'll take a break. Back in a moment. Welcome back to more of Kaleidoscope today. Mothers Assisting Mothers is an organization for mothers diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Founder and executive director Bridget Hobson and Dr. Sally Massimi of the Summa Health Foundation will tell us more about the organization and a series of upcoming seminars geared to women with disabilities. Welcoming Bridget Hobson sitting next to me, founder of Mothers Assisting Mothers and Dr. Sally Massimi. Director of Community Benefit for Summa Health Systems. Good to have you with us as well. Uh, t t tell us, Bridget, well, what, what, is, what is the mission of Mothers Assisting Mothers? Mothers Assisting Mothers uh, provides resources and educational services to the 
children whose mothers have been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. uh, we provide clothing, shoes, uh, school supplies, toys to the children, and we provide support groups which provide education to the moms regarding finances, uh, home safety, and you know just how to manage family. You're the founder. What, what, what brought you to founding this? Um, I founded Mother Assisting Mothers in 1997 when I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. I just started graduate school and I had two children at home and I uh, started doing more research about it and I was already working in social services and community and decided to put together resources and education uh, to help mm -hmm. women like me. Right, right. Well, uh, Dr. Sally Massimi is with us. She's Director of Community Benefits for SUMA Health System. Tell me, what's SUMA's involve, involvement in this? Well, we met Bridget in November when she came to us and asked us if we could help. And we were so impressed with her and her passion and dedication, and we felt that this really fit with the mission of SUMA Health System, which is to improve the community uh, mm -hmm. and the health of the community. And so we thought that this would be a great way to um, start a relationship and hopefully develop a partnership that will go on into the future. So you're going to have a big event. You're going to have yes. a big event where you're going to talk about a little bit about this. Uh, uh, Bridget, why don't you tell us about this big event which is going to be taking place on Saturday, September the 18th. Okay, it's called Empowering Disabled Women to Win. Um, it will be a first seminar series. We will uh, be pro pro bringing in presenters mm -hmm to uh, educate the women on financial management, uh, home safety, and managing children, family, behaviors, communications. Well, where, where is this going to be now? It will be at SUMA Health Systems uh -huh. in Akron, Ohio. So SUMA, SUMA has been there for you. So yes. we, we bring in Dr. <laughs> Massimi again. Tell me what you want uh, uh, people to walk away with once they go to this event, uh, 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 Sally Massimi. Um, we're very interested in hoping that people will um, understand that there's a lot of assistance available, a lot of hope. Um, we hope that the mothers uh, who participate will be able to uh, provide some networking to learn uh, more about each other. And the professionals who attend will also learn the narratives of the moms who are attending and will hopefully be um, of more assistance to them in the future. Starts at 8.30 in the yes. morning, that's yeah. Saturday, September the 18th, at Suma Akron City yes. Hospital. Akron City Campus, yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, it's, it's going to, I'm certain you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna talk a lot about folks who've gone through some of the things that you're going through. Yes. And, and how they can, mm -hmm. I see that uh, on here, Kim Sellers is going to be uh, from, from WZAK Radio. Yes, definitely. She was on the broadcast with us just a couple of weeks ago or so. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. well, what, what's your feeling about this? Who, who should attend, who can attend? Um... Mothers with MS, of course, mm -hmm. and then women who, who have just been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And then it's also for um, any woman who has been diagnosed with a chronic illness, uh, who is dealing with the day-to-day -day of a disability. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be MS, um, but they can come and get the information and share in the networking and um, be a part of this community that is uh, developing for disabled women. Let's put a number on the screen where people can get more information and they can buy their tickets as well through this telephone number. Yes. Uh, it is 330-907-7909 as you see at the bottom of the screen or you can go to MS dash mam dot org yes. more information there what what are tickets going to cost us tickets will be um, twenty dollars per participant that includes lunch and breakfast uh, for professionals we're offering continuing education units of thirty dollars and then exhibitors are welcome from the community as well and their tickets are thirty dollars saturday september the eighteenth uh... doctor uh, uh... masimi you're you're a you're a, a doctor uh, of registered nursing I, yes. w what what does this do when you have something like this how does this benefit the, the MS patient and the rest of the family. Psychologically, how does this help? I think it, it brings people uh, together, which helps them a lot with their networking. It helps them with relationship building. It allows them to hear other people's stories and know that they're not alone. And it uh, provides a, a pathway for them to possibly explore um, more assistance, um, more help, and a feeling of community that we're trying to, to provide for this group of people. So once again, as we close out, it's going to be Saturday, September the 
18th. 8.30 in the morning, it begins. It runs through the day, I would imagine, yes. at Suma Akron City Hospital. And this is open to anybody who can get there, right? Yes. For those in, for those in, in Greater Cleveland who may not know exactly where Akron uh, City Hospital is, well, what's the address? It's 525 East Market Street, mm -hmm. Akron, Ohio, 44304. So it's going to be a wonderful event, wonderful yes. event. Thank you so much for Thank being on the you. broadcast. We appreciate what you do Thank you. and what you founded. Thank and may, you. And may God bless you both for what you do. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so very much. very much. Bridget Hobson and Dr. Salim Massimi, they're going to be talking about mothers, assisting mothers. I'm going to take a break, but we promise to return, but only after these words, especially for you. Here's Marsha Mockaby of the Urban League, always with us at the bottom of the broadcast. The Urban League is one of our partners. What are you thinking about today, Marsha Mockaby? Well, you know, Leon, just coming off of the National Conference a few, um, about a month ago, something that still resonates with me is yeah. an experience that I had when I was there, and I wanted to share it with you today. At the opening celebration, uh, we were at a wonderful church in Glen Arden, Maryland. And we had 500 young people there and thousands of people to see the kickoff of the centennial celebration of the conference. And a very special thing happened there. Dr. Maya Angelou and the rapper Common came on stage and did performed an original poem that Maya had written uh, for in honor of the Urban League Centennial. Mm -hmm. And it was just an absolutely stellar moment. And then at uh, the end of that, Reverend Al Sharpton, Reverend Jesse Jackson, and Dr. Cornell West came on stage and escorted her away. So it was just a, a real moment in, uh, in history for us and our people, and it just really reconnected to the Civil Rights Movement. It was a very meaningful moment for me. Had to be very inspirational. Absolutely. So you Absolutely. had these two generations, too, Maya Angelou yes, and the, and the rapper then, mm -hmm. had the, the, the two of them together, the two of them find, together, finding a common cause and a common theme. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely, and it was absolutely uh, a wonderful time uh, in D.C. with the National Conference. I came back inspired yeah. and uh, on fire to uh, do the work that we need to do here in Cleveland. So, sometimes so. artwork can do that for you. Well, that's absolutely. what art is designed to do. Absolutely. It is to make you feel something. And, yes. and that poetry that they did, that performance poetry that mm -hmm. the two of them did, certainly was a, gave you a feeling and gave you inspiration. Absolutely, and I think the messages of the conference really celebrated the first hundred years and laid the foundation for the work that needs to be done in the second hundred years. Mm -hmm. And so we're very much charged up and, and ready to move. Okay. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you being on the broadcast. Thank As you. always, Marsha Mockaby. Thank you. Leah. You are inspirational just being with us. Thank you so much. We both say so long. Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, Kaleidoscope Magazine, and News Channel 5.